We're gonna have a good time. Hi guys, Todd here. Today we're going to be having a look at the Zeta RBA from Haku Engineering and this is the production version. Now, I did a preview for this little guy a few weeks ago. So Stephen has now actually sent on the production version, which I've been playing with for the past few days. Obviously I've been playing with the prototype version for quite some time. Uh, this is, this is it. This video will give you specs. Uh, so this is where I shall explain everything that comes with it, the everything. But the short and sweet version is that um, this is, you can do you can dial this in any way you want uh now this is a bridge or a rebuildable atomizer i should say for a borrow tank that goes inside things like billet boxes 5050s delros uh anything that takes the borrow tank from a billet box that is what this is designed for you can change it any way you want you can go from direct lung down to mouth to lung, and I'm talking 0 0.8 mil draw. Super tight, proper, proper mouth to lung. Or what I have here. That kind of stuff. But as always, enough with the chatty chatty blether blether. Close ups. Now this is the production version. So the actual Atty that you see here, or the, the RBA that you see here, this is what you will get. The only differences are, and if, if you look at this photo here, you will see that uh, you will actually have serial numbers on the bottom of your deck, and you will also get extra screws as well. And, and that's it, that's going to be the only differences, but I'll cover them as we go along. Once again, going to arrive in your typical little Haku plastic box. You'll find two spare O-rings for the base of the, the RBA. You are going to get many, and I mean many, spare screws. Uh, you're looking at about six grub screws hex, six grub screws flat. Uh, there's six wick screws that are flat and four wick screws hex configuration. So th th there's many spares with this. And because you have the hex and you have the flat, you know, depending what you prefer, you can change them out. You'll also get a little sticker that I don't have here. And that just basically, it's kind of like the Intel logo, but it says Haku inside. So you can stick it on your billet box if you wish. Now, obviously we have an Allen key here. So what we'll do is we will start off with the deck. This is 316 stainless steel, and it's got your usual Haku finishing going on. We've seen this in all the Haku RDAs as well. Uh, we have two little screws here. Uh, basically, these are for wicking. So what you can do is you can raise and lower these. So if you're running, say, uh, you know, quite a low resistance, then you can just leave these down flat and you can use a lot of cotton. If you're using like a more just say a heavier PG, a thinner juice, or you are mouth to lung where you don't need as much cotton, then you can raise these up and you can block your wick hole off. So that's what these little guys are for here on either side. The actual deck, you have your two little screws here. And if you look here, you can see that just turning this is going to raise and lower this up and down. And if you want, you can just can keep screw unscrewing here and you can change these out for, you know, just for flathead screws instead. But I'm going to stick using this. Inside this area here, uh, you've actually got, it's like five, say five, maybe six millimeter across here. So we'll cover what coils you can actually get in here in a second. You did see that you do get this bit also, so you can actually, you know, you can affect your airflow using this as well. So I can open that up like that, leave the air coming in fully open, or I can turn it and just close it down. So you can use this if you desire. Now the actual airflow that is actually here, so the, the inner diameter here, this is actually four millimeters ID. So if you don't put any inserts in here, that's what you've got, four mil but you do get these little inserts here that you can screw in. Uh, hopefully you will see that this part in the middle here is actually threaded and you can see this little guy here is threaded also. Now these are actually four 1.5 millimeter holes that are in this one here. So this is, this is the most open insert. This one here, two 1.5s, 
this little guy here. This is two one millimeter air holes here. But you can see also, hopefully you can see that there. See how you've got a slot there as well? So you get a flat head screwdriver so you can screw that in. And last but not least, we have a little 0 0.8 for you true mouth to lung fanatics out there. Now the equivalent airflow for all of these, just working my way back up the scale. So you're looking at 0 0.8, the two one millimeter holes, they work out at 1.4 millimeter ID. The two 1.5s work out at about 2.1 millimeters. The four 1.5s will give you an equivalent three millimeter inner diameter airflow. And then once again, without using any insert at all, you're back to the four millimeter. So you can change this as you see fit. Now, obviously the thing is, you know, you will, you know, you, there's no way around it, but uh, you need to take your build out. Uh, if you want to change these little inserts, you are, yeah, you're taking your coil out. I'm not going to lie here, but uh, yes, it, it can be a little bit, um, how is it we say it here? Footery. Um, there can, there's a certain knack to getting these in. However, you did see there that uh, I managed to get that one in there with a pair of tweezers, no problem at all. Give it a couple of turns with the screwdriver and, and there we go. That, that's what we've got. The only one I usually find is really, uh, yes, is a bit of a struggle sometimes to get in is the, the little 0 0.8, but just dropping that in there just now and you can see, go on and you go, you can do it. There we go. That's it. Now, not only can you configure the airflow at the very base, underneath the coil, you can also configure the airflow within your chimney. So the chimney airflow without any inserts is seven millimeters. So that's the bore inside there, seven mil ID. Now, what you do is you actually get three options. This one here, five millimeter inner diameter, three millimeter inner diameter, and one millimeter in diameter. So you can dial this right in to your exact preference. So what I'll do is drop one of these in just now and let you see how it works. So top of your chimney, grab your insert, just drop it in there. Once again, these are 316 stainless steel uh, and just screw this right down and there we go. The only one that uh, may cause you an issue, depending on the, the tools that you have around your house, is uh, this big guy here. Uh, now, uh, you can usually get it started off no problem. Once again, this is only if you don't have a big flathead screwdriver to you know reach across there. I usually find that I can just spin it around like that no problem, or even just using my tweezers, because we've, let's face it, if we're using an RBA, we should all have little tweezers. And that can work as well, just spinning it like that. And down she goes. I think what we'll do first is uh, we're going to put in a mouth to lung build. Now I've been using the prototype for some time now. I've tried out various builds, but I'll just quickly run through a couple here and show you the differences that you can get. So first things first, I have my one mil insert in there and we're just going to back this off. Same on the other side. I'm going to be using a 2.5 millimeter inner diameter coil. This is one of uh, my coils from PC Coils, and uh, this will come out at 0 0.8 ohms. My legs are actually facing down the bottom here, uh, but I'm just gonna drop this in by hand because it's really, really easy with this thing, and just hold it in place like that, and then I can just tighten this up. The thing I really like about these posts is it's not grabbing, the, the actual legs here, so it's not deforming your coil. So I don't actually find I need to use a coiling rod, you know, when I'm putting the coil in there. So just straighten that out a little bit, just give it a little lift. I like to try and keep the coil, the top of the coil, just level with the posts here. But obviously make sure that uh, your coil is not going to be touching the, you know, the little insert in there. Snip the wires off the ends there, and just make sure that they're nice and flush. Now. This is threaded at the bottom of the 510, so I can screw this onto a mod. But I should point out, it's only got like two or three threads there. So it might not go into some things. Uh, so, so my coil master burning tab or whatever it's called, uh, it won't actually fit in there. And it's just catching on this mod. It depends on how deep your 510 is. It might not work on all your mods that you want to you know, test fire it with. It'll work in the bridge, no problem, or work in your borrow tank, no problem. But when, when it comes to the test firing, you may have a couple of issues. But uh, I'm just test firing this. We're just going to pulse it and get any hot spots out. 
And before I forget, I better drop in this insert here. Sorry, dog hair. Uh, I better put in my one millimeter insert in the actual chimney. Now, once again, if, if I would say if you were using a you know a heavier PG, you know I would be adjusting these screws here. Uh, because you might not be using as much cotton as I am, but I'm using a heavy VG, so I'm sticking with a lot of cotton, so I'm going to leave these screws down just now. But basically you're going to grab your little top cap here, you can see you've got slots, and I'm just going to pop this over here, feed my cotton up into these slots here. Same on the other side, push this down, that's it. Uh, I will say this: the tolerances in this are far, they redesigned this is far far better. Uh, I did have problems with the prototype, but this goes on and off, no problems. Uh, also, I should point out, and I don't believe I didn't say it, but they also redesigned the, the the deck in here as well, so that you can get bigger coils in. But uh, I'll show you that in a second. So with that down, uh, I've already teased out my cotton when I passed it through, so it's nice and fluffy. And all I do is just snip. Snip off. Just like that. But I then kind of, you know, I just pull it out like this. And, and everybody's, you know, a lot of um, people have been using RBAs for billet boxes and rebuild, but for, they'll know all this, they've done it before. But my personal preference for this is once I've fluffed it out, cut it, I then kind of tease it up like that and I push it just back in, just a tiny little bit, um, just in the center like that. And that's me. So I'm just going to finish off my Regency Miranda. I mean, how's that for product placement? Uh, so we're just going to pop some of this on here you're then going to need one of these, a borrow tank. Uh, so I need my chimney, I need my chimney first. Uh, make sure your little o-rings in here are all lubed up. So I'm actually cheating. I'm putting a little bit of e-liquid on here as well as ensuring that my o-ring in the top had it on it as well. And then we're just gonna drop this in here like that. And this is just gonna pass up inside. Boom, there we go. So with that pushed up, I'm then gonna take this one, in you go. Don't make it look more complicated than it actually is, Mr. Todd. And there we go, we've got that there. And I'm gonna push my chimney back down. See, doing this in camera, it's not the easiest thing in the world. There we go, we're lined up. And then just push it down. Boom, there we go. So it's just flush up the top there. And that's it. Now, capacity, 4.5 milliliters of juice. That's what this will hold. Uh, I know the Zeta looks absolutely massive and you're thinking, no way, but it does. I've measured it, 4.5 milliliters of juice you'll still get in here. I'm going to take my glass, pop that up there, take some more of my Miranda, which is a creamy lemon tart. Whilst I'm here, however, I will point out, you can see uh, my, there, that's where my wicking kind of stops, is about there. So just through natural movement of the tank and so on, I do get the vast majority of that 4.5 mil. Um, I, I don't let my tanks run less than you know a third anyway, but uh, you know just to measure that out again, there we go, that's where the bottom of your cotton sits. That's 0 0.8, that, that's a classic 0.8 mil draw. Uh, the, the, yeah, there's no getting away from that. Uh, and that's even with the the very bottom positive contact down there. That's I've got no reducer on it or anything like that. I've got no plug, nothing going on. Uh, it's just the insert underneath the coil and the diameter of the chimney has been massively reduced. And I mean that that's a three milligram I'm vaping there just now and I'm getting a throat hit from it. Uh, it's, yeah, if you're mouth to lung, you'll be happy as a pig in. Right, juice emptied out, glass taken off. Now I need to get this to bits and, and normally, I usually just push this up from the bottom like that. Then I just kind of turn it around so I can access the screws here and then just kind of hold on to the top here and then just 
getting that with my nail, pull back down and we're good to go. Uh, pull the chimney back up and then that should fall out like that. Now I've not bored you here, uh, what I've done is I've just put in a fuse clapped and once again this is from Peter, this is one of his PC coils. Uh, this is a 3mm inner diameter and hopefully you can see here I do have a lot more room here than I used to with the prototype version. Uh, with the prototype I could get that in there but it, it was so so close, it was dangerously close. But uh, they changed the, the design on the actual head here, or I should say the posts, they just rounded it off a bit. Uh, so yeah, that's going in there no problem at all. Now I've taken out the insert, there's no insert below here. I'm not going to have a reducer in the chimney, so we're going from one extreme to the other full mouth to lung to fully open. So once again we're back with the Delro. Uh, this is no reducers, no inserts, nothing. This is as open as you can go with this thing and hopefully you can hear that. I mean that's yes that's that's a, a direct lung. Tiny tiny little hint of a restriction to it though uh, but uh, definitely definitely direct lung. 0 0.35, 0 0.35 ohm coil in this, fuse clapped in 3mm inner diameter coil, I'm at 25 watts just now. Actually I'll take that up to 30 watts, it's just a little bit more heat in it. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's 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 not half bad. And that's pretty much it. It's now summary conclusion. What do I actually think of the Zeta RBA? Uh, now, once again, there's lots of RBAs on the market for the borrow tank. There has been for years. There's been years they've been out. The USP on this one is that normally, and, and I do say this, and I have said this many times over the years, Anything that tries to do more than one thing starts to fall into the category of jack of all trades, master of none. The unique selling point for this one is that it's a master of everything it tries to do. It's very, very good at mouth to lung. It's very good at restricted direct lung and it's very, very good at direct lung with a tiny little restriction on it. Tiny little restriction on it. Uh, you can change everything the chimney bore, the you know, the airflow underneath the coil, you can dial it in exactly to how you want it. Uh, it wicks well, mouth to lung, direct lung, I've no issues with that at all. It's very, very easy to build on. It's 316 stainless steel. The screws are stainless steel 316. Uh, you get all the different options with the screws. You've got the you know the hex or the flat heads, uh, there's spares galore there, the the inserts are made from 316 stainless steel. It's not shit. It's very good. Now, the, as far as cons go, and any cons I list here are potentially, I'm criticizing myself because I should have picked these things up in the prototype and fed them back to Stephen. The only things that I can think to mention, and this goes for these things in any atty, um, because of the inserts, if you want to change the airflow underneath the coil, you have to take your build out. That is a con. Only other thing that I've got, and I personally don't see it as a con for me, but I will mention it because I do think that some, a small minority of people may think it is a, a, a con. This is my direct lung build, and you can see that I fluffed out the cotton a bit more than I did in the MTL. I've got a bit more cotton coming out here. Now, I think that when I get to the last fifth of a tank, that's when it starts to get, yeah, I'm maybe not getting full access to it. I'm still wicking away, but if I was direct lung, then I would refill. So yes, I think you're looking at the last fifth of the tank is, is maybe dead and you would have to fill. That is going to be a con for some people. Uh, me, I would never let my tank get that low anyway. I would be filling it up. Uh, but the, the 4.5 mil capacity, you know, kind of takes the sting out of that. Another con as and I always, always list this as a con, is it's a Facebook group thing. 
it's a Facebook group thing. Uh, that's where the lists are, are done. I mean, normally you can get into the Haku group no problem. Um, and usually down the line, what Stephen does is you'll usually find that some shops do actually get a hold of these things. And you may, if you're lucky, be able to buy them from certain shops in the high street. Not the high street, but online, sorry. Uh, so that will come down the line. But right now, uh, I think they're on to their second list they're working on. I've given you all the spec in the up close section, which is what I never gave you in the preview video. And I, obviously the changes are you've got an increased capacity and you've also got, uh, I can get a three millimeter inner diameter fuse clapped in, in there and I don't have to worry. It's not as close to the posts and it's not short out or anything like that. So you've got a bigger range on the size of coil you can put in also. I hope I haven't missed anything out. If I have, then uh, feel please ask in the comments below for this video and, and I'll answer what I can. If I don't have the answer, I'll ask the man that makes the thing. Uh, but uh, I'll have one last little vape on this. And uh, I think we'll call it quits at that. Stephen, my friend, thank you as always for sending this on. Uh, also, thank you for sending on the prototype and thank you for listening to me waffling on about what I thought could be improved. I know there's me and, and there's many other people that got prototypes that were all giving feedback on these things. And, and I think that's the way things should be done. Prototypes should go out to people that aren't afraid to give um, negative or constructive feedback. And a company that listens to that and improves on a prototype, uh, uh, two thumbs up. Uh, that's how it should be done, in my opinion. But uh, yes, I'm going to go now before I waffle even more. Uh, to you, thank you for watching. And until next time, bye for now.